Добрий день, я вітаю. Hello everyone who has joined us. This is Oliver Tamanova. This is Ukraine Media Center at Ukrainian Forum, the ninth year of the war and 132nd day since the beginning of the full-scale invasion. I'm grateful to everyone who shares the truth about the fight of the Ukrainian nation. We will have the following events today. At uh, 1 o'clock we are going to uh, speak to Maria Mezintseva, the head of the parliament delegation uh, at uh, the Council of Europe, and we will be discussing the uh, Lugano meeting. Uh, later we will have uh, an interview with uh, Sergei uh, Brachuk, uh, discussing the consequences of the missile attacks on Odessa. And uh, at uh, half past two, we will have the speaker of the Ministry of Defense, Alexander Matuzenik. Right now, I would like to introduce to you our speakers. Uh, the initiative that was uh, working to establish an important database, a database of Russian propaganda. Uh, so here we have with us Oksana Moroz, the author and the founder of the initiative uh, Don't Become a Vegetable. Also Oksana Loza from the same initiative and uh, Maxim Zinchenko, the data analyst. So I would like to give the floor to Oksana and uh, let us discuss how you managed to create this thing because uh, well we we all want uh, the uh, propaganda agents to be held accountable for uh, their deeds thank you so i will briefly introduce why we have established this database and what are the main goals behind it we all understand that the russian propaganda are not uh, the main speakers that we see on the screen it's a much broader network and of course uh, one of the uh, strong features behind russian propaganda is uh, the variety of tools that they are able to use simultaneously these are not only media uh, these are also public speakers opinion leaders uh, thanks to whom the war is brought to every home so we tasked this database to on the one hand, collect uh, all of those who need to be held accountable for the informational basis of this genocide of the Ukrainian nation and to actually hold them accountable. So we intend to discover who is involved in this and then to impose sanctions through the existing mechanisms and to publish uh, these names to uh, make them known to the public. So we have right now specified 15 categories in the database i'm not sure if you can see them right now because the font is a bit small but all the categories are present to an extent in the information space and uh, they uh, produce this information to change public opinion so we are focusing on those who uh, establish and shape the informational field. We uh, have not focused on the so-called ideologists of the Russian world, but we will focus on them later on the next update of the database. And also we have included some um, exotic categories such as uh, astrologers, uh, esoteric uh, specialist magicians, etc., because they are also supporting the Russian propaganda. We were focusing here mainly on Russia, but you will also find there are names of uh, Belarusians and also some Ukrainians collaborating with the Russian propaganda. Our aim here is to uh, show uh, the uh, uh, different uh, branches of this system and uh, as many names as uh, possible support in each of those branches for them to be held accountable later. Now I will request my uh, colleague Anna to explain how we are finding names for this database. So uh, can, can you briefly explain, uh, explain us about the categories included here? So as 
Aksana has mentioned initially, it's not only a technical tool for holding people accountable, it's uh, also showing us how the Russian public opinion is soaked with propaganda uh, and uh, manipulations and fakes uh, that they are disseminated. Basically, a new reality is being created with lots of informational noise. On the one hand, a person may tell that uh, they don't know where the truth is, thus they are not doing anything and uh, also they are able to pick for themselves any explanation of uh, this war or special operation, uh, the explanation that would be backed by their values. So uh, how did we track this propaganda? Well, the, the primary level of the propaganda are the statements of uh, politicians and public uh, officials like Lavrov, Medvedev, uh, Moskalkova, and uh, also army officials such as uh, Konoshenko and Nizintsev. They are creating the uh, main uh, vector that goes to the lower levels uh, next, such as uh, federal TV channels, the Ministry of Defense uh, TV channels, Vizda, and also uh, the personal level of uh, those who is uh, consuming and broadcasting propaganda at the same time. Here I am in uh, the bloggers, uh, experts, uh, talking heads, uh, singers, actors, etc. So they are transforming uh, their messages uh, to shape them uh, in such a way that they are suitable to their target audience. Uh, this uh, makes the messages both universal and diversified. So let's uh, look at the example. There is uh, the broad message of Russophobia, and uh, there are athletes uh, and actors who uh, have taken this um, message and supported it quite actively because their careers were impacted by the sanctions and uh, uh, they uh, perceive the situation as an attempt to cancel the Russian culture and uh, uh, themselves. So this uh, became a, a very popular message and it also was uh, supported by the church which uh, shaped it for its own audience that we are Russia, a holy country which has never attacked anyone and uh, is just uh, protecting its right to follow its own civilizational path. And also there are experts and traditional media, uh, the ones who are speaking about the threat of NATO at the talk shows. So uh, Lavrov has mentioned this uh, about the political level of Russophobia. Again, we are protecting ourselves because people are uh, trying to close us down. They are trying to cancel us. So there are 15 categories, as Oksana has mentioned. This includes experts, media, army, politics, uh, theater and cinema, singers, bloggers, church, and also youth propaganda as a separate group. So we are speaking here about uh, those who work with uh, the uh, young people or with the students, uh, the youth army, etc. And uh, there is also a smaller category which uh, includes uh, everyone else because, again, this is a primary stage of this uh, database. It's being updated and right now it's uh, 1800. We uh, want to arrive at 3000. So we have collected evidence, uh, the screenshots, uh, the streams, uh, the social media posts, the regular media posts, also the participation in uh, different propaganda events like the one in Luzhniki, participation in the so-called celebration of the 9th of May, uh, which were also used to, to justify the special operation. Also signing the collective statements to support uh, the uh, special operation, such as uh, the letter signed by uh, many Russian writers, and also the blogs, and also other kinds of public support of the Russian propaganda aimed at 
different target audience. And we also were tracking the dynamics of it, like, for instance, uh, the person was silent in the beginning, but later joined uh, such events. Again, this person was recorded as an agent of propaganda. And also, if we see that uh, the person was attending occupied territories, this is an additional evidence. The markers included were not only the attitude to uh, the full-scale invasion, but also participation uh, in the justification of uh, the war of 2014 and also denying the right of Ukraine's very existence and all kinds of Russian narratives uh, intended to destabilize the uh, situation and ban the Ukraine as a nation. Thank you. Now let's give the floor to uh, Maxim. I want to add an important phrase here. So what's going to happen uh, with the database uh, next? We provided it to the National uh, Agency for Corruption Prevention. Uh, they also had the uh, database of uh, propaganda agents, uh, which had 800 persons uh, before the beginning of our uh, collaboration. And we have established this collaboration on a regular basis, and they will be using our data to introduce international sanctions. So our main intention is for these people to be held accountable. And also, as it was mentioned here, we intend not only to find one uh, propaganda person and to work with them, but also to find uh, all of those uh, connections. Hello, dear colleagues and dear partners, dear friends. Uh, thank you for giving us opportunity to share the word about our platform. And we will be discussing some terrorists, uh, collaborators, etc., uh, which uh, is uh, uh, readily available information in our uh, system. I'm a specialist uh, in uh, business development of the U-Control company. And after February 24, our team decided to establish a tool intended to help discover uh, the uh, uh, Russian uh, uh, Russian footprints because. Uh, these uh, propaganda agents are contributing uh, into uh, this war, and uh, thanks to our partners, uh, we are, are able to use uh, the National Agency for the Prevention of Corruption uh, to impose sanctions against those people. So we are an experienced team, uh, you control. Uh, we decided to use this experience, and based on uh, this experience, we established the RAS system and it helps to discover the tracks of Russians, including this list of collaborators. I would like to show you how this system works. So we have different categories here. Uh, we can go to each of the specific categories. Uh, so we have the information about some particular persons. We have the description of the data set, and uh, you can go uh, into the person's pages. You can do this on your own after you get registered in the system. So what's uh, special about this system? There are over uh, 20 different uh, countries, and we uh, can check each of the collaborators by each of those uh, 20 countries. So we have collected some information and uh, what do we need to do to view it? We collected information about uh, certain persons. We can select the person and look through the information. So the database also includes uh, military criminals, uh, the data that's published uh, daily and collected by the Ministry of Defense. Also, uh, there are uh, criminals who uh, serve in the Russian army. So all of them are here. And why? And what for? 
uh, first of all, you can check if the person belongs to some particular group. Later, you can check the person in different uh, countries, and then you can also check uh, their family members. Previously, we considered different possibilities. Um, uh, we uh, considered uh, uh, the countries uh, of uh, CIS. Uh, not always uh, information of them is available. Uh, but uh, still, if we have uh, a collaborationist, if we have selected some uh, particular uh, person, like this Mr. Jordanov, we can check them in the system directly, and uh, uh, we can see here the description, we can see uh, the uh, source of uh, the information, we can see uh, the, the, the previous history of the person, and we can see that the sanctions were imposed on them. But that's not enough for us. We want to check who that person is. Everyone needs to see sources right now. No matter what uh, conference we are speaking at, people always ask us, where did you get the data? Are you sure that the data is correct? Because many people are showing fakes. Uh, many people are whitewashing their names. Uh, since 2014, uh, by the 2022, uh, uh, there were uh, just several hundred people uh, introduced. Uh, sanctions were imposed against uh, 800 people, but right now there are over 10,000. And the most important part here is to have sources. Uh, this is important for the journalists, uh, this is important for the investigators. We have this data, we can confirm that uh, the person is not here by chance, and we can confirm that it's not a fake. So we can also uh, type in this person in the system, and uh, we can select them in certain categories. So uh, we can already see that uh, the person is a sanctions list, and uh, can this person uh, use uh, the f family member or to, uh, can they use them as the owner of uh, their property? Uh, of course they can, and that's what many people do. And our colleagues are collecting this information and we analyze them, or you can analyze them, because each week new data become available, the partners are providing this data, and by this huge data sets we are going to do the search. So when the war is going to be over, we will still be looking for them, uh, the terrorists, uh, the military criminals, uh, the one who are supporting Russia. This work will continue for years, and uh, this is why this platform was created, to put our efforts together and let us find uh, those people. So we are not much interested in the sanctions lists, but we are interested about the information about the person. So again, if the person was uh, the state servant in the Russian Federation, they uh, uh, were submitting declarations, not as detailed as in Ukraine, but still uh, from uh, these declarations we uh, can see some data, of course data of birth and things like that, but also there are sources of information and connections of the person. So for instance, uh, there is a son, uh, can the son have some property? Or we can check the son. Uh, we can see uh, the connections, uh, we can see the companies uh, uh, opened uh, by the person. So uh, we can collect information from different uh, integrators and we uh, use some evidence such as uh, screenshots, web archives. Uh, we know that uh, the uh, Telegram channels uh, become unavailable, but again, if screenshots are made in a timely manner, the evidence will be preserved. This is necessary for the journalists to be able to do uh, their media investigations. Also, this information will be available to the law enforcement 
We are not only the ones looking for such people. In the U.S., a special department is being established to discover such assets, such as buildings, companies, etc., etc. The uh, things uh, that can be uh, confiscated for the uh, compensation of losses in Ukraine. And uh, also, uh, speaking of business, you can check if uh, the person is someone's relative and uh, whether whether you should or should not work with them. Let's consider Margareta Simonian for an example. So we have uh, 20 countries, as I have mentioned. This includes uh, uh, Poland, uh, Britain, Cyprus, uh, Malta, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, etc. The countries are different. I mean, their government registries, the data sets in them are different. So we are doing our best to collect as many open data as possible. Also, there is information about sanctions lists, uh, the information that becomes available in our system. So the sanctions list uh, that's available here is a sanctions list of uh, the national uh, Agency for Corruption Prevention. The information is available through API. And we can consider them here. We can consider family members. It simplifies our work, and we uh, will need to work to find some particular information. Also, additionally, we can use other sources, uh, declarations, etc., to discover the companies associated with the person. We can look into them, see who was a co-founder, and maybe there were already some journalist investigations already showing the connections. So this information collected uh, by the colleagues uh, will be used for updating. So if we have collected a database, no one is uh, using it, uh, sanctions were imposed against the person, uh, then uh, uh, they were lifted. But why should we do this work? We do this work in order to collect additional information. And we were also collecting information about the uh, top thousand managers of the Russian Federation. This comes from open sources. The problem is that some resources of the Russian Federation became unavailable after uh, they were used in mass scale. So depending on our needs, uh, the needs of the journalists, uh, of uh, the law enforcement of, uh, and of the business, uh, this uh, uh, system can provide uh, the necessary functionality. You can get registered, uh, test it, and benefit from it. Your control has been on the market for eight years. Uh, this gives us uh, the necessary experience to check the sanctions lists. So there are over 20 different lists here, and you can check information uh, available here. Thank you. I would like to invite all of the speakers for the uh, Q&A session. We understood that uh, this is a database is for journalists and for law enforcement. How can journalists uh, use it? Is it on Uscan or U Control platform? Uh, well, uh, the uh, articles will be published. How to? use it. The main thing is for you to get registered and to get verified. So we also intend to protect uh, this uh, data from persons who are not entitled to see them. So you have to provide information on where you work and uh, what is uh, the person uh, of you accessing the data. The main intention of the platform is to find uh, the traces of uh, Russian and Belarusian activity. And do you have any uh, feedback uh, possibilities if the journalist has some additional information for your database? Yes. Uh, for instance, we have the methodology developed by our partners. If we are speaking of uh, collaborators, uh, so there is a description uh, how to work with this uh, kind of uh, persons and also there are other categories and uh, our employees are ready to consult you on the possibility of uh, such interaction. Also if you have any 
questions uh, about the propaganda database uh, it's actually at the very first uh, stage uh, of uh, its uh, establishment so you can uh, submit your uh, uh, comments and the database will be updated on a quarterly basis hello I am uh, Angelina Strzkolish from Ukrainian Forum. I would like to ask about the Ukrainian uh, propaganda agents. Uh, have you looked into this aspect and what can be done to work against them? We as a initiative are doing lots of research uh, right now to classify those who are working for the Russian propaganda. We uh, have also uh, selected the category of people who are not directly related to the Russian Federation. For instance, people who were working for Medvedchuk's uh, channel, uh, so they are of course different from Ilya Kiva or let's say uh, Ms. Simonian. So we are right now working on the second uh, database, uh, the one about the liberal bloggers, so to speak, both the Russian and Ukrainians. We will be collecting information on them. We will be uh, classifying them on the usefulness or non-usefulness for Ukrainians. Uh, I mean, we, we are not calling them good Russians and bad Russians. We are just looking if they are supportive of Ukraine or not. And uh, the third kind of people we are going to consider are Ukrainians who are working in the Ukrainian information space and how helpful are they. We are conscious about uh, uh, accessing them in the uh, last uh, level because uh, the, the, the the first stage is to go through the Russians. So have you started this interaction with the National uh, Agency for Corruption Prevention? Yes, once we started working with this database, we have started working with them as well. So right now they have access to all the data available in the database and we are planning to make updates on a monthly level. Uh, the idea is once we have the information verified and we have several stages of verification, we provide this data to them and their employees are going through it as well. We discuss the plans for the first coming period. We discuss the focus. Uh, so for instance, they are going to work with other countries as well, not only Russia, because unfortunately their activity is not limited with some uh, geographic boundaries. So we intend to get some effect, not the database for the sake of database. No other questions. Uh, thank you for this tremendous work you are doing. Hopefully, uh, when we see each other next time, there will be some real outcomes and real accountability for those people. Uh, thank you. Our next briefing is going to take place at uh, 1 p.m.